Hi everybody, good class today on looking at shifts in supply and demand curves. And thanks again to Coco for putting up with us while we used uh, Bogue as an example of what happens when prices change. Let's jump right into the second part of supply and demand, which is changes in equilibrium. So what happens to equilibrium when we see shifts in supply or demand or both curves? Okay, what happens when the demand curve shifts? So demand curve starts here as defined by D and moves out defined by D prime. So sometimes it'll say D1 or D2. Uh, easiest for me here given this uh, notebook software just to put in D prime. You can see here that the demand curve is, is shifting out because of the direction of the arrow. So what happens? An increase in demand leads to a rise in both equilibrium price and the equilibrium quantity. So as we shift from here to here, you can see that price and quantity, where we were at equilibrium here, shifts out. The new equilibrium is here. So P and Q, then P prime and Q prime, noting the two changes. We haven't had a shift in the supply curve. This is a great example of movement along the curve itself. Now, similarly, a decrease in demand leads to a fall in both the equilibrium price and the equilibrium quantity. So moving down this way, you would see movement. If we started on this one, you'd move from here down to here. Number two, what happens when the supply curve shifts? Well, again, you'll see the first example, the supply curve is shifting to the right denoted by the direction of the arrow, also from S to S prime. Very important when you are uh, illustrating using graphs that you show good notation and good labeling. You show initial supply and demand play placement by S and D, and then any shifts are denoted both by an arrow and by a prime or two or something else. In addition, you need arrows that show any change in price, an arrow that shows any changes in quantity. So in this case, an increase in supply, shifting to the right, leads to a fall in the equilibrium price and a rise in the equilibrium quantity. You can see here, this was the old equilibrium, this is the new equilibrium. Conversely, a decrease in supply, and that should be A instead of and, sorry about that. A decrease in supply leads to a rise in the equilibrium price and a fall in the equilibrium quantity. So again, pretend this is the first, this is initial, and we move this way, you're going to see quantity move this way and price move this way. Okay, let's take a look at what happens when we have simultaneous shifts of supply and demand curves. So you see here the movement of demand, movement of supply from D to D prime, S to S prime, so you know that there's movement of both of those curves. Let's read sort of the rules. When demand increases and supply decreases, the equilibrium price increases, but the change in the equilibrium quantity is ambiguous. Let's think about that again. So if demand increases and supply decreases, we know that the equilibrium price will go up, but the change in the equilibrium quantity is ambiguous, meaning we're not sure if it's going to go up or down. Let's take a closer look at that because I think that's a tricky concept to get your head around. So demand increase, supply decrease. Let's look. Demand increase, supply decrease, right? Demand increase, supply decrease. So if demand goes up and supply goes down, we're going to see movement. We'll get this out of the way for, the second, for a second. So I had demand increase and I had a supply decrease. What happened to my price? Well, Price went from here to here, so it increased. Well, let's look at a different combination of demand increase and supply decrease. So here's a very small supply increase, supply decrease, and a very small demand increase. We still have an increase in price. Now let's see what we can do with quantity. Put this up here just for measurement. See if we can make quantity ambiguous because that's what the rule says. Well, we'll go back to equilibrium here and we'll say 
if demand increases, okay, and supply decreases, well, looks like we have an increase in the quantity demanded. Let's try a different combination. Let's create a drastic drop in supply and a smaller increase in demand. Look what happens in this case. We actually have now a decrease in quantity. So the point here is when you have an increase in demand and a decrease in supply, you know you're going to get an increase in price, but you don't know whether the quantity is going to increase or decrease. Conversely, if you have a demand decrease and a supply increase, the equilibrium price falls, but the change in equilibrium quantity is ambiguous. So let's do that quickly. Demand decrease, supply increase. Get this out of the way. Demand decrease, supply increase. Okay, price has fallen. And here, quantity demanded has fallen as well from this point to this point. So let's look at a dramatic increase in supply and a tighter decrease in demand. Now, price is still decreased per the rule, but quantity has actually increased. So that's why we're talking about the ambiguous nature of what happens to quantity demanded when you have movements that are opposite. So demand increase, supply decrease, demand decrease, supply increase. Now let's think about what happens when both of the curves move in the same direction. We're going to use our same model, same sliding back and forth, but we're going to see what happens when they move in the same direction. So demand moving out, supply moving out, or demand moving in and supply moving in. Let's see what happens here. If I move my curves back to the same spot, now I'm going to flip this one because the rule says what's going to be ambiguous is price. Here's what we're going to do. Movement in the same direction. Supply increase, demand increase. Okay? Got it. Quantity went from here to here because here's the new equilibrium. Price went down in this case in that new equilibrium. Equilibrium moved from here to here. Let's look at a different example. Let's say that we have a very small, very small, or rather a very large increase in supply in demand, and a very small increase in supply. Well, let's see what happens. We know the quantity is going to move out. Quantity is going to increase. Remember, when you have movement in the same direction of the curves, quantity will always increase. In this case, though, if we look at the new equilibrium price, instead of falling, falling down, it's actually going to increase. Let me make sure I have my correct graphs here. Since when I move them around, it's hard to, it's hard to put in the new labels. So, again, when we have simultaneous shifts of supply and demand curves, when you have both curves moving in the same direction, you're going to get an increase in quantity or a decrease in quantity, depending on whether their curves are moving in or out, but the change in price will be ambiguous. So let's just quickly review those terms. When demand increases and supply decreases, the equilibrium price increases, but the change in equilibrium quantity is ambiguous. When demand increases and supply increases, the equilibrium price falls, but the change in equilibrium quantity is ambiguous. Here's a suggested way to remember this. When we have opposites, so increase and decrease, increase and decrease, quantity is ambiguous. When we have same, so increase and increase, or decrease and decrease, price is ambiguous. Again, those are things just to drill into your heads. Um, but when all else fails, use the graph. Do what I'm doing here. Move it around. Um, you just do it using pencil and paper. 
and you'll very quickly get comfortable with what happens to changes in price. See if you can make it go up or down and you'll know whether you're dealing with uh, simultaneous shifts in curves in the same direction or in different directions. We're going to do some problems tomorrow that actually give us more practice with movement in those curves to make sure that we're very, very comfortable with it. That's it for today. Have a great evening.